Hi Cancer, welcome, it's Meredith. I am here with a monthly reading for November 2020. And what a pleasure it is to be here for your reading. <laughs> uh, we're doing a different kind of layout for November. I have uh, shuffled out three cards for you from the Queen of the Moon Oracle. And these cards represent uh, energies within the atmosphere for you to navigate this month if you so choose. And then for the deeper message, we have Tarot of the Cat People. All right. As always, I'm going to recommend that you watch your Sun, Moon, Rising videos. Take the whole month to watch those. Do it at your leisure. It's a whole lot of intuitive uh, guidance on offer to you for navigating the energies of the month. Uh, on the 3rd of November, we have Mercury going direct. Yay! Everybody loves that. Uh, the 15th, we have a new moon in the sign of Scorpio. And on the 30th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Gemini. Okay, let's get into your message. Your first oracle card is called Resistance. <laughs> what are you in resistance with, Cancer? <laughs> oh, What kind of floodgates are you holding back? Uh, when I see the word resistance... I often feel a sense of old, fearful thoughts that could be limiting us. And then we create, we, we create resistance around fear because, you know, who wants to look at it, right? It gets uncomfortable, doesn't it? Though it serves us to take a look at what we're in resistance to and why, so that we could create some freedom, liberation, right? So let's see what the tarot cards have to say. First, you have Seven of Pentacles. I have fallen in love with this card. Uh, it, it used to be my big dramatic eye roller card because I would see it and what I felt was, oh, you're so close, but not yet. <laughs> and many readers, when they turn this card over, indicate that we are in at a point of waiting for something. And waiting breeds frustration as far as I'm concerned. So instead, I've shifted my energy when I see the Seven of Pentacles to one of allowing. And I say that because there's a ripe harvest on the vine. You will likely see that on almost all tarot cards. There's some sort of harvest in blossom, but it's not quite ready to pick. So you can't rush it, right? Nobody can rush the strawberries into ripeness. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. And they don't taste that great if you pick them too soon, do they? So this is a, an invitation for you. All sevens in tarot are about heaven on earth within your own self relationship. So you may be in resistance at this time to allowing <laughs> this harvest to take his time though you feel a sense of frustration because there isn't really much you can do about it so what's going on here is contrast for you between your will and divine order so this is a great space for a mantra such as i am in perfect alignment with divine order takes the pressure off. Also, when I see the seven of pentacles, I feel like we, we have been putting a lot of effort into something and we have very little evidence for what's actually blossoming. And that can over time become frustrating. That becomes a little bit fearful. Then we go into resistance. You know, the ego rises up and tells us some old story and we start to believe it. And you know the drill, you've been there. Those are the vulture thoughts. So let's take the seven of pentacles and see it as a positive sign from the universe for you that you have this amazing and abundant, bountiful harvest on the vine. It's not quite ready for picking, but you know it's there. And then you can relax into divine order, divine timing and allowing. And when you do that, all the pressure, all the resistance, all the fear starts to let up. You totally shift your energy. And you, you move into uh, appreciation and excited anticipation. Then we have the emperor. <laughs> I 
I love the Emperor. He is one of my favorite tarot cards. I've got a bunch that are my favorites, but he's in my top five. And he's Aries Fire. He is direct. He has the nickname of the know-it-all in tarot. And this is just the kind of energy that you want to call on at this time. If you find yourself in resistance to something, what would the Emperor do? He would leverage all of his experience, which he's got a wealth of, and his wisdom onto the situation or the circumstance. He's not going to sit there and whine about it. He's going to hop right off the throne and be like, I've got the fire for this. What does this situation require? Right? So this is about you, Cancer, embracing your fiery nature and being direct about whatever you are in resistance to and doing so without judgment. Not judging yourself. Uh, loving kindness and compassion is called for here. And do that like an emperor. Do recall that he is the father of the tarot. He is divine masculine energy within the tarot as well. So this is an energy of taking action and the right action for you or what is probably the most harmonious action for you at this time is allowing. Take the breath and recognize that you are moving in concert with the entirety of the divine all. It flows through you. And sometimes when we come into contrast with our own will for lack of evidence for what we're, what's on the vine here, we have to come into harmony with our inner emperor and take the action of allowing. And it looks like nothing's happening, but that's when everything is happening. So faith and trust are called for here. Then we have the moon. Yeah, there's your card, Cancer. <laughs> Intuition, something of the unknown becomes known. And, you know, the moon is letting you know that you don't have a whole lot of brilliant clarity for what's on the vine here in the seven of pentacles so you do have to take it on faith you have to really trust that the divine all is flowing through you and you have to allow that to happen decisively like an emperor would you also are are being asked to deeply rely on your intuitive gifts and when we come into resistance, we can talk ourselves out of our intuition, can't we? We're really good at that. It's the ego story. It's the vulture thought. Like I said, we've all done it. We know that drill. <laughs> so we have to now leverage resistance on that drill, don't we? And come back into our heart of hearts and our intuitive voice and listen to that message. It's consistent. It's encouraging. It's powerful. It doesn't let up. It is not anxious. Okay, that's how you can tell the difference between ego chatter and intuition. The ego is always anxious about something. And then you have the Six of Swords. Hmm. You have change here. Sixes bring balance and harmony in a reading. The Six of Swords is making a decision to move on from less than favorable circumstances. So Cancer, you may be in contemplation for a move of some sort. It could be strategically in the way you conduct your life. It could be literal in the foundation you reside upon at this time. You may be moving house or considering moving house. And you are perhaps looking for signs from the divine all that this sort of change is still on offer to you. And you may need to be making decisions about how you will go about creating that experience for you and you could be looking at all the what ifs or hows what if and how is just not your job that's for divine order to sort so get back into your intuition get into your experience as an emperor and take action there take action to trust and have faith in your own self to read the signs moon as they come to you and be guided by them Next you have strength. I love that for you. There's some more fire for you. You've got Aries and Leo fire in the reading and you're tapping those energies, which is great. The strength card is a reminder to not compromise your wild and free spirit no matter what. Don't settle for less is what I feel when I look at the strength card because some opportunities and offers come our way 
and we have long been in a creation process and we have so much excited anticipation for the fulfillment within the creative process that some offers look like you know a sign that is kind of dazzling but it, it's not all the way there you have to have the strength of discernment to know you have a discernment card here too in the reading one of the oracle cards you have to have the strength of discernment to know what really is in alignment with your with your seven here in this row with your heaven on earth and if you doubt it if you're wondering someone once said to me if it's not if it's not absolutely yes it's no or not now <laughs> so have the discernment and the strength to know what is a no or what is a not yet or a not now okay the strength card is also courageously expressing our vulnerability and we could be in resistance to doing that as well so you take this where it's most relevant and you leverage and apply all of this beautiful energy on anything that you are in resistance to or what could benefit you by leveraging just a little bit of resistance let's move on to your next card and it is called self-reflection what are you seeing when you look in the mirror <laughs> Ooh, is that creating resistance your first card is eight of wands Ooh, swift moving energy and momentum i like that this connects us back to our seven over here in the first row because when you see that seven as i as i mentioned it can look like nothing's happening but everything is happening and there's a swift moving energy on the eight of wands it's creative fire and passion yet again revisiting us there's raw enthusiasm skill and talent on this card as well and it's an eight which is a double four which means there's a super stable energy here and in self-realization or self-reflection actually you may not have been feeling like you are on mm, stable ground stable footing and this card is confirming for you that you actually are things are not exactly as they seem so you have to look deeply within your own self the moon pay attention to your intuitive messages there and trust this dynamic flow of energy this is also an ancient tarot considered a marriage card so it is the weaving together of energies so this is you in the process of bringing things together even though you're not seeing the kind of evidence that reassures you that it's actually happening <laughs> you have to return over and over to trusting yourself and holding faith next we have and actually before i get to these other cards my sense is with the eight of wands again it's a swift moving energy there's information incoming so you are going to start to see subtle signs but be in heart harmony with your own heaven on earth as you are in self-reflection okay that will help you see the signs that are trickling in at this time then you have the fool mm, a brand new beginning a brand new journey yeah i really do feel that six of swords is connected to some kind of strategic move energetically spiritually speaking in your way of being and how you're caring for yourself and how you are conducting your life and even speaking over your life there's a new journey there but i do feel a connection with the six of swords to the fool of moving on so there is some kind of move it could be in your career how you are of service or you're literally moving house and this is joyful this is an unencumbered process the fool is ever unencumbered not concerned of consequences and i like this because it tells us that you are shifting out of i don't have evidence i've been in resistance to allowing the divine flow to flow through you and beginning to trust and really enjoying what it is to be buoyed by your own faith <laughs> that's beautiful okay then you have rejuvenation which is the judgment card in tarot this is a card of having another opportunity something of note on this card you have the strength card over here and this is about maintaining your wild and free spirit expressing it allowing it to be and to be unencumbered uninhibited with it and i feel that energy here look at those wide open arms i feel that on judgment and it's another opportunity to take a pass at something in your life and i feel 
that it's connected to the Eight of Wands quite nicely. There's some information incoming that gives you inspiration for something you previously considered and maybe put down or put away, or it was one of those no, not yet. It wasn't an absolute yes for you. And now it is. So an opportunity presents itself and you have the self-reflection now to see the first time that it came around you were not prepared for the responsibility of the opportunity and in that reflection you now see that you are you're ready to journey into whatever is on offer to you i also feel it's coming in unique ways ways you had not considered before it's unexpected and surprising delightful though it has come round before you're just seeing it with new eyes whatever it is mm -hmm. and then the hanged man how sweet. Look at all this major arcana in your reading. The emperor, the moon, strength, the fool, judgment, the hanged man, enlightenment dawns. So yes, you do get into your intuitive flow and you allow <laughs> yourself to be informed by the divine. So wonderful. You do step into your inner discernment, which we will get to next. The, the hanged man is a pause in the action. So we have great divine masculine dynamic forward moving energy over here on the emperor and we have the strength to know when we need to pause in the action hanged man gain enlightenment gather ourselves garner our gains and take a look at the landscape before we proceed that's the hanged man right there and then look at that doing that is a wise choice because now you have the nine of cups this is a dream comes true a dream coming true a wish fulfilled. So over here on the seven, we're like, yeah, I have no evidence. Yes, I'm supposed to keep the faith. Blah, blah, blah. The ego starts, right? That's the resistance. We go into resistance with the process for lack of evidence. But then, you know, wisely you come back around to self-reflection, self-realization, and you're like, yes, I, I am here because I followed my intuition, Moon, in the first place. I had the strength to do that. And you come back to it. And it, it creates this opportunity. Like this is judgment re-delivering the, the dream, the wish, the fulfillment on the nine of cups for you. But in a way that you are now mature and experienced enough to move on with it. Six of swords. That's beautiful. Congratulations, Cancer. Let's get into the discernment card now. <laughs> Telling the difference between... <laughs> Resistance and intuition, uh, recognizing how to go with the flow and let go rather than try to control everything, right? You know, the emperor gets called a control freak too. We can way overthink things. So it's about getting out of your head completely, but maintaining the bridge between head and heart. The two are meant to work together harmoniously. That's discernment. And your first card is, look at this, eight of swords. <laughs> That's a mental trap right there. But the card is letting you know that you eventually set yourself free of that. And it's all over your reading. Eights and tarot are about motion, movement, momentum. And you've got three of them right now with strength, eight of wands, eight of swords showing up in the reading. And self-reflection is number 17, one and seven equal an eight. So there's that. What else do we have? Okay. Beautiful. Eight of Swords, setting yourself free. This is the card of having the discernment, the wisdom to know that your liberation is in your hands and your hands alone. On the Eight of Swords, nobody is coming to rescue you. You're not, and that's about not looking outside yourself. And we get into mental traps thinking that we maybe need help or input from someone else. The ego story might tell us that. That might stall out some of our dreams, goals, and manifestations, Nine of Cups. But you have the discernment to know that it's all within you. If you've got a dream in your heart, you have everything, every resource required to make that dream come true. And that's what the Eight of Swords reminds us of. So the person is typically blindfolded, hands tied, thinking they're trapped in a circle of swords, but the knot is loose, our hands can come free, we take the blindfold off, we see that we are free, we no longer compromise our wild free spirit on the strength card, right? You have the discernment, 
You've had the resistance, you've had the self-reflection, so you understand how to navigate an Eight of Swords life experience. Then we have the Ace of Swords. How beautiful is that? Yes, it is a divine and cosmic gift of brilliant clarity, everlasting strength. So that is a message on repeat to you in this reading. The universe is on your side. It's here to help you help yourself. It gives you the hand up and that's beautiful. Really beautiful. This is a card about making really wise decisions as well. And it's about you using that Ace of Swords effectively in your world. Yeah. Now you can also add the Eight and the Ace together since they are of the same suit and you come up with the Nine of Swords. That's the anxiety card. That's the I'm awake at 3 a.m. and I can't put this thought away. I cannot bring it into harmony. That's where resistance requires discernment and self-reflection. You know what to do if you find yourself there. You get back into your heart space. You reconnect the bridge between head and heart. And you trust yourself. You have faith. Let's see what's next. The Seven of Swords. Well, no joke there. It's exactly uh, a perfect card because the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords, you got the Six as well over here, and the Ace. First, let me say that Aces in a reading neutralize the challenging energies of cards nearby. So these are energies that have been neutralized by this ace, and that's beautiful. The seven of swords, here we are with another seven. It's more heaven touching earth within us, though this is a card where resistance shows us how we rob ourselves of our joy. When we linger here too long, we create an we do create an anxious situation for ourselves. That's no fun any day of the week, any hour of the day, right? So it's recognizing this, and I feel it's confirmation to you that you do recognize when you are robbed of your own joy by a mental trap. And then you move that energy along beautifully, and the ace is here to support that. The universe sends you a sign. You, you find your way through it. You don't look outside yourself for it. You look within and you get into heart space. So beautiful. And then look at this High Priestess, another major arcana for us. That is the inner oracle, the inner wisdom, listening to our intuitive gifts, the moon. You have it twice now in the reading. The moon and the High Priestess. It, when these two show up in a reading, it is impossible for you to miss the message. The universe is going to show you tons of signs. So where you have this lack of evidence on the Seven of, of Pentacles, uh, the universe is eight of wands delivering messages, delivering signs to you. And your intuition is the filter, the lens in which to see those signs through. Perfect. Stay connected to your nine of cups. Stay connected to your strength. Thank you so much for watching, Cancer. I do appreciate you being here. Liking, sharing, subscribing here on the channel. Do check out the daily messages. Have a beautiful November. Uh, also check out your sun, moon, rising videos as well. And peace, joy, happiness, love. Congratulations to this beautiful message. Namaste.